I love Pastor Leslie's children's service this morning. I love the demonstration of the light because that's so powerful. Don't you agree? I mean, it, it, it touched me the way that he showed the children what it means to be connected. And without a connection, then there is no light. So today, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about staying connected. And for some of you who were here earlier today, you know when I say a few minutes, uh, Pastor Leslie may need to tug on my robe. I want to share this in a way that I don't often share, and that's by looking at these verses separately. Jesus began by saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. What a beautiful image. And as I was shaking hands at the end of worship service, someone walked up to me and said they have a family member that works in a vineyard, and this meant so much to them. It, it made them realize even more about this passage. So I'll get a little bit more into what they shared as we go through this. But I want to address the different parts here. Jesus said that he is the true vine. There's only one true vine. You see... In the Old Testament, oftentimes Israel was referred to as the vine. But as we know, they goofed up a lot, just like us. And so God had to find a one true vine. And he found that in his son, Jesus Christ. So where Israel failed, Jesus was able to succeed. He embodies everything that we're supposed to be. He is the one true vine that connects us to the Father, and we are the branches from him that produces much fruit. Now let's talk about this vine dresser for a minute. I want to read this because I thought they described this perfectly. It says, God the Father is shown to be the loving vine dresser. A vine dresser is more than just a farmer. He knows all about the grapes, how they grow, what they need, and when they need it. A vine dresser's grape vines remain with him for decades. I want to put a pause right there because I want you to think about it. Some of us garden, right? Some of us have beautiful flower beds, some garden and plant vegetables. But each year, they're different, aren't they? Usually, we plant annuals for our flowers. Some of us may plant roses and then, you know, hope that we can prune them the right way or that they'll just grow on their own and look pretty the next year. <laughs> and in our gardens, we have to plant new seeds every year, right? And, and so, but with a vine dresser, his vines are with him for decades. He knows them intimately. As I just read to you, he knows what they need and when they need it. That reminds me of when, my, when I used to visit my uncle and he had this huge farm and he would say, Stephanie, we're not going to plant over there. Y'all, I learned to drive on a tractor at nine years old. Best story of my life. I love it. But anyway, lines were not, the roads may not have been perfect, but I learned how to drive. Uh, but my uncle had this big, big farm, and he said, we're not going to plant over there. And I said, why not? He said, well, we planted over there for the last few years, and it needs to take rest. I'm like, well, it's just dirt. And he's like, but the soil needs to replenish, and uh, it needs to rest, so we're going to plant over here. I didn't quite understand it, didn't quite get it then, but now I do, because sometimes we need rest. And just as my uncle understood his dirt, the vine dresser understands the vines, and God understands us. That's more important. Amen? It goes on to say that the vine dresser comes to know each and every vine intimately, for they are all unique and different. Isn't that what the word says about us? That we're all unique? And I know none of you are like me because God wouldn't have made two of me. 
He loves me. He created me. And I'm perfect in his eyes, but there's only one of me. The vine dresser knows how each vine fares from year to year, which ones are more productive than others. He knows how each vine responds to the various forms of caring for the vines and how best to care for each vine. It is amazing to think about, but cultures say that every vine seems to have its own personality. And that's what I'm saying. There's only one Stephanie. I have my own unique personality that God gave me. And he knows what I need, when I need it, and how to give it to me. That's what a good vine dresser does. Of course, in this picture, there is only one vine. In our story today, there's only one vine, Jesus, which has branches that come from him, so God, as the vine dresser, is focused on the one vine that he has to tend, knowing that through this vine flows the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit flows into each branch church, nourishing us and giving us exactly what we need when we need it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> The main part of tending the vine, however, is taking care of the branches. It is the branches Jesus talks about in verse 2, where he says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear much more fruit. Now, Jesus didn't say that he cut this branch off and he threw it away. He says he takes it away. What does that mean? Well, the Greek word that is used in verse 2 actually can be translated that he lifts it up or takes it away. And I want us to think about this. The vine is low to the ground, and you have these branches that grow off from it, and they become heavy, and they start to droop. And, and so they begin to try to do things on their own. So they start to dig down and try to get root in the dirt and get their nourishment from the dirt and not the vine. So here comes the vine dresser walking along and he sees his beautiful vine with these heavy branches. And when it says that he takes the branches away, he's taking them away from the soil, lifting them up, propping them up, so they can get proper nourishment from the vine. See, that's what God does with us, church. When we tend to go off on our own and try to do things our own way, has anyone ever done that? <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand because I already know you're human. You've tried it. But when we do that, if we've ever been connected to the vine, God's not going to let us go and just do our own thing. He's going to lift us up. And that's what the body of Christ does for one another as well. Because we're all part of that same vine. So when I see, Pastor Leslie, I'm going to use your name. When I see Pastor Leslie hasn't been at church in three or four weeks, and we know that's not going to happen. That's why I'm picking on him. But when I see he hasn't been at church in three or four weeks, it's up to me as the vine next to him, as the branch next to him, to reach out and make sure that he's okay. To lift him up in prayer. To let him know that the church is thinking about him. That we love him. That we miss him. Amen? So this is what the Holy Spirit does for us, church. It keeps us connected through the vine and pours the nourishment into us. The nourishment of the character or the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And what's amazing is how gentle the vine dresser is with us. Because again, we try to go off and do our own thing, be our own people. And the vine dresser is not coming through stomping on his vine and his branches. No, he's gentle with it because he loves his vine. He loves the branches, just as God loves us. Amen? 
Think about it. When you mess up and you go to God and you confess, Lord, forgive me of my sins, he's not casting you away. He's not cutting you off. He takes you in his loving arms. He comforts you. He restores you. And he gives you rest. Amen? That's what the true vine dresser does for his vine and for his branches. He's there with them all the way. You know, and then we have these times where we think about the branch may not be as fruitful. Maybe that branch is not producing any fruit. Because Jesus says that, you know, the one that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Again, he's not cutting them off, but he's setting them aside just as my uncle set aside that plot of dirt on his farm. The vine dresser understands that not every day or every year will this particular branch be fruitful. So he lifts you up and gives you rest. I want you to think back to when you were first when you first received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you first became a Christian, you know, you were so excited. You wanted to sing in the choir. You wanted to be on the usher board. You wanted to be in mission. You wanted to do, 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 right? And you got a taste of all those things. You were producing much fruit. But over the years, you found your little nick. You found what worked for you. You found what you enjoyed whether it was singing, working with different missions, working with children, being an usher, you found what you were good at. And God kept pouring into you. He just kept pouring into you. The Holy Spirit just kept growing you up and blessing your ministry. So as a young believer, he allows us to get involved in all these things, and he lets us see what we're good at and what he's blessing, and then he gently guides us in that direction. Just as he gently guides the branch, he gently lifts it up. It reminds me of the song, Love Lifted Me. Love Lifted Me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. It was the love of God and the Holy Spirit that he pours into us, that lifts us up, church. Be reminded of that when you want to give up and stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to Jesus Christ through studying the word, through, through prayer, through singing songs and, and reading psalms through being with fellow Christians. Let God's love lift you up. Amen? Then in verse 3, it talks about, Jesus uh, talks about how he will clean the vines. You know, I, I'm reminded of a story where it talks about the wood, and it says that there's old wood that has been infected with insects and maybe has dry rotted. Sometimes that happens with fruit, right? That's the fruit that has broken off from the branch. It's no longer connected to the vine or the branch, and it's just there on its own. But then there's also the fruit and, and the branches that are still connected to the vine. Those Christ cleans, church. The Holy Spirit cleans us. We may have some thoughts that just go against the will of God, just go against everything godly, but God cleans us. He allows his Holy Spirit to knock on our hearts. I love that because I know sometimes when I'm saying something in my head, thankfully nowadays I don't just blurt it out. Uh, the Holy Spirit corrects me before it comes out my mouth. But I'm so thankful that God's Holy Spirit is there to cleanse my thoughts, to cleanse my actions, to be with me each and every day. And that's only possible because I'm staying connected to the vine. 
If I turn my back on God, God doesn't change. He doesn't move. He doesn't go away. But who does? I do. So we have to take, stay connected. That's our job. And God will do the rest. Amen? You know, I talked about how we need to be involved, how we need to, as young Christians, we're doing this, that, and the other. I want you to take a moment and think about what I said at the offertory prayer about transformation part. That's the way that we can help connect our community to God. Amen? There are so many people that are lost, not just the homeless, but if we start here with Transformation Park and we reach out to this homeless person, church, we're connecting them back to the branch that's connected to the vine, that has the Holy Spirit running through it, that's connected to the vine dresser who loves that person unconditionally. And guess what? As we're connecting ourselves to that individual, that individual is reaching out and connecting to someone else. And do you see how the Holy Spirit is beginning to work and work through you, each one of us, and building up the kingdom of God? It can all start right here at Transformation Park. Not just with our financial blessings, but I know that there are teachers out there. I know that there are school, uh, social workers out there. Social workers, I know what we can do. Amen? Amen. We can take a little of something because God has blessed us with knowledge and resources. And no matter what we're doing, we can take that and we can build it up. Transformation Park is going to need teachers to help individuals get their GEDs. They're going to need social workers to help get people connected to resources so that they may be able to get a permanent apartment or home or get the benefits or get the mental health that they need. Any of these things. There's a purpose for each one of us in this one little community. This one little community can be where Polk Street can focus and grow and grow the kingdom of God. Be in prayer about it. God wants us connected to our brothers and sisters. Don't just sit back. There are no bench warmers. You may be sitting on a pew today, but God doesn't want you sitting on it Monday through Sunday. Amen? He wants each one of us to roll up our sleeves, reach out to our brothers and sisters, and help them get connected to the vine. You see, verse 4 and 5 says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Unless it ab abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So what I want to say about that with this abide, it simply means stay connected. You know, we look at biblical words and like abide, what does that mean? How does he want me to abide? What's going on? What am I supposed to do now? Stay connected. Stay in the word of God. Stay in fellowship with one another. Let the Holy Spirit work in you. Let God be your vine dresser. Stay connected, church. I can't say that enough. That's the only way the body of Christ will succeed is if we stay connected to the vine. Now, I know we have some, some wonderful things going on with Polk Street right now, and then, you know, we're, we're transitioning, and we have these wonderful possibilities, these wonderful works and missions, ministries. We can do those things, but we can't do them by ourselves. The Word just told us that we need to stay connected. Stay connected with your church. Let God work through the church, through the ministries here at Polk Street. Let the Holy Spirit pour into you so that you may pour out into others. Amen? Stay connected. Verse 7 and 8 says, 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So look at that. Hmm. When we stay connected, when we abide in the vine, we are blessed. Wow. Not only is God glorified, but we're going to be blessed too? How awesome is that? We're doing the will of God and he's going to bless us. We can ask whatever we want in his name. And you know why we can do that? Because when you're connected to the vine, your desires are no longer your own. But your desires match up with the desires of God. And he's going to bless what he desires. Amen? Oh, no, uh uh-uh. Let me say that again. Your desires will no longer be the desires of your own. Your desires, when you're connected with God, when the Holy Spirit is flowing through you, become the desires of God. And he's going to bless what he desires. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I want to make sure y'all get that. When you're connected, all things are possible. But when you're not connected, you can do nothing. Not even your worldly desires can be blessed to the fullest if you're not connected to God. Because you see, God's will will be done. And you can run all you want. I know. You can run away from what God is calling you to do all you want. But one day, just as he knocked Saul off that horse on the Damascus Road, and I say horse, it may have been a donkey, that's not important, but whatever he knocked him off, he knocked him to his knees. And God's will was done through Paul, amen? So once you're connected to God, know that his will will be done. God is calling on each one of us. He is lifting us up right now for such a time as this church so that these walls will be bursting with people who are desiring the will of God, who are coming together to glorify him. And the only way that these walls are going to be bursting through people is if each one of us, all of us, do our part. And we can only do our part when we're connected. So I urge you today to stay connected to the vine and let God's will be done in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen.